Hello, everyone. My name is Ketan. I'm the author of the Indian Economy Handbook and the faculty of Indian Economy at upscprep.com. Now, your prelims is just around two months away. There will be a lot of students who come to me and uh, they say that uh, they have syllabus complete the syllabus hai, but still they are not able to solve the previous year questions. Right? So what we are going to try to do in this video is we'll take up uh, previous year questions from uh, the last five years and we'll try to solve this together. And I hope uh, by the end of this video, you'll feel much more confident on how to tackle these questions. Okay. Now, if you see the weightage of uh, Indian economy questions in your prelims examination, some years, uh, even uh, around 20 questions has been asked, but on, on an average, you can see around 14 to 15 questions you're getting every year from this subject. And that is why the subject becomes quite important for you. And a good performance in Indian economy will really increase your chances of clearing prelims. Now, if you see the trends of individual chapters in uh, prelims examination, so these are all the chapters from uh, my book, the Indian Economy Handbook. And if you see that, there are some chapters which have a lot of weight in prelims, like the money chapter, ho gaya, money, inflation, monetary policy, public finance, taxation, banking, financial market, agriculture. In Topics से काफी ज़्यादा question पूछे जा रहे हैं, okay? Also external sector and international economic organization से भी काफी question पूछे जा सके, जा रहे हैं। तो सिर्फ इन chapter से around 85 percent questions related to Indian economy in your prelims examination is coming. So हम लोग इसी chapters में focus करेंगे। We are going to take our previous questions asked from these topics and uh, try to solve them one by one. Okay. Now, what I want you to do is, just in question, I display karunga. You pause the video, read the question, and try to solve them in the comments below. And after that, you can again play the video and uh, see how I am trying. Uh, I am solving those questions. Okay. All right. Let's start. The first topic I am going to take up is money. So this is the question asked in uh, prelims twenty twenty three. Now you pause the video, attempt the question, and then play the video again. Okay, let's see. Uh, with reference to central bank digital currencies, consider the following statement. So straight away, I will underline central bank digital currencies. Uske baare mein question pucha ja raha. Statement one is, is it possible to make payments in digital currency without using US dollar and SWIFT system? So, this uh, obviously you should have some idea about central bank digital cur digital currency. Coffee news may be raha. Hai. So, this is the digital currency issued by the central bank or the RBI. Correct. And this is very much like uh, your cryptocurrency. But the obvious difference is cryptocurrency decentralized. Hota hai. Uh, the CBDC is centralized because RBI issue kar hai, right? And RBI issue kar hai, it is also a uh, legal mode of payment. A fiat currency jasa work karta hai, whereas cryptocurrency is not uh, legal tender money in India. So the, the num statement one is, is it possible to make payment in digital currency without using US dollar or the SWIFT system? So the very idea of issuing CBDC is that cross-border payment bhi kaafi easily ho sake by passing all these uh, uh, international currencies, US dollar, obviously, agar ek new technology RBI leke aa rahi hai, to RBI would not want it to be dependent on US dollar, right? And vasse bhi India is trying to move away from being dependent on dollar, agar de-dollarization ka concept tum logo ne padha hoga news, okay? So, uh, statement one is correct. Statement two pe aate A digital currency can be distributed with condition programmed into it, such as time frame for spending it. Okay. Now, even if you have not uh, studied about this, if CBDC ko kafi, um, you know, short mein tumne padha hai, kafi detail mein nahi padha, you don't know ki aisa kuch system hai ki nahi. But still, you can understand ki even jo hum demand draft dete hai, even check dete hai, these physical systems that we have, 
उसमें भी हम एक टाइम फ्रेम रख सकते हैं राइट तो अगर उससे भी हाई टेक्नोलॉजी यूज करके वी आर मेकिंग डिजिटल करेंसी देन इट शुड बी पॉसिबल टू हैव अ कंडीशन प्रोग्राम इन टू इट सच एज अ टाइम फ्रेम दिस टाइम फ्रेम इस टाइम फ्रेम के बीच में तुम्हें ये मनी स्पेंड करना है ओके okay? एक और तरीका होता है जब भी ऐसे कुछ स्टेटमेंट स्टेटमेंट आते हैं जब तुम उसके बारे में श्योर नहीं हो देन ट्राई टू रिवर्स दैट स्टेटमेंट कि विल सी बी डी सी विल नॉट हैव अ टाइम फ्रेम उसके बाद ऐसा टाइम फ्रेम का कोई ऑप्शन नहीं होगा उसको स्पेंड करने का राइट तो इट डज नॉट लुक राइट क्योंकि इतना हाई टेक्नोलॉजी के साथ सी बी डी सी बनाया गया है तो ये सिंपल टेक्नोलॉजी तो होनी चाहिए कि उसमें एक टाइम फ्रेम एड किया जा सके जिसके बीच में उसको स्पेंड करना है तो स्टेटमेंट टू ऑल्सो लुक्स करेक्ट विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट तो करेक्ट पूछा है दिस इज इम्पॉर्टेंट कभी कभी इनकरेक्ट पूछ लेते हैं यहाँ पे और फिर तुम करेक्ट मार्क करके आ जाओगे एंड बाद में अफसोस करते रहोगे तो यहाँ पे काफी का खास ध्यान देना तो बोथ लुक्स करेक्ट आंसर शुड बी बोथ वन एंड टू राइट नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन नॉट दिस इज अ क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू इसको अटेम्प्ट करो और राइट so question is with reference to non fungible tokens nfts consider the following statement so again similar type ka question hai is bar nft ke bare mein the nft ke bare mein tum logon ne suna hoga it is something related to cryptocurrency okay um uh, nft are unique objects on the digital uh, space right so क्रिप्टो ब्लॉक ब्लॉक चेन्स होते हैं उसमें जो यूनिक आइटम्स होते हैं उनको नॉन फंडेबल टोकन्स बोलते हैं वो एज कलेक्टेबल्स लोग अपने पास कलेक्ट करते हैं राइट जस्ट लाइक इन द फिजिकल वर्ल्ड पीपल लाइक टू कलेक्ट आर्ट पीसेस पेंटिंग्स वगैरह सिमिलरली डिजिटल स्पेस में यू कैन कलेक्ट एन एंड फिर उसका वैल्यू एज पर अप्रिशिएशन और डेप्रिशिएशन ऑफ द वैल्यू यू कैन मेक सम प्रॉफिट्स so what are the statement they enable digital representation of physical assets okay sahi lag raha hai this is correct they are unique cryptographic tokens that exist on blockchain now impresses on unique so again correct because these are unique third is they can be traded or exchanged at equivalency and therefore can be used as a medium of commercial transaction now yahan pe they are saying they can be traded and exchanged at equivalency Now, ये यूनिक है दीज आर यूनिक तो इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल कि उनको इक्वेलेंसी में ट्रेड किया जा सके बिकॉज यू डोंट नो वॉट इज द इक्वेलेंट वैल्यू यूनिक जब भी कोई चीज यूनिक होती है तो उसका कोई इक्वेलेंट वैल्यू नहीं हो सकता है राइट इट ओनली हैज अ वैल्यू जो सामने वाला रेडी हो जाए तुम्हें देने को ओके okay? अगर दूसरे टाइप ऑफ क्रिप्टो करेंसीज होते हैं लाइक बिटकॉइन देन यू सडनली नो व्हाट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ बिटकॉइन मार्केट में कितना वैल्यू चल रहा है तो उससे इक्विवेलेंट अमाउंट में एक्सचेंज किया जाता है पर एनएफटीज आर यूनिक आइटम्स सो नहीं किया जा सकता है है ना सो दिस क्वेश्चन इज इन करेक्ट ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट आर करेक्ट सो वन एंड टू द आंसर शुड बी ए ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन And this is question asked in 2021. Attempted. All right. Now, so the question is, money multiplier in an economy increases with which one of the following? Now, in this, me, you need money multiplier. Pata hona chahiye. Money multiplier kya hota hai? Whatever the amount of money that RBI injects in the economy. आरबीआई ने कुछ सपोज वन लाख राइट इंजेक्ट किया इकोनॉमी में नॉ दिस वन लाख विल बी सर्कुलेटेड इन द बैंकिंग सिस्टम ऑफ द कंट्री राइट एंड ईच टाइम जब वो मनी बैंक में डिपॉजिट होगा तो बैंक विल क्रिएट सम अमाउंट ऑफ क्रेडिट बिकॉज जब भी बैंक में यू डिपॉजिट सपोज वन लाख यू डिपॉजिट इन द बैंक then bank has to keep aside some money जो उसका requirement होता है जैसे cash reserve ratio statutory statutory liquidity ratio ये सब bank को keep aside करना होता है लेकिन बाकी money the bank can loan give as loan right so अगर एक लाख deposit किया तो maybe 
eighty thousand, the bank can loan it. So suddenly the economy has one lakh eighty thousand in the economy. फिर ये eighty thousand will again be rerouted. फिर वो बैंक में कोई और डिपॉजिट करेगा. Then out of this, suppose the bank will again loan out sixty five thousand. So total अगर एक लाख आरबे इंजेक्ट कर रहा है इकोनॉमी में तो मे बी द इकोनॉमी लिक्विडिटी विल इंक्रीज बाय अमाउंट ग्रेटर देन वन लाख है ना मे बी थ्री लाख हो जाएगा फोर लाख हो जाएगा डिपेंडिंग ऑन कितनी बार बैंक में डिपॉजिट हो रहा है वो मनी सो दैट इज मनी मल्टीप्लायर तो लेट्स सी द ऑप्शन अगर मनी मल्टीप्लायर कब पड़ेगा इंक्रीज इन द सी आर आर कैश रिजर्व रेशो इन द बैंक तो दिस इज इन करेक्ट क्योंकि द हायर द सी आर आर मोर मनी द बैंक हैज टू कीप असाइड तो उसको वापस से एज फॉर्म ऑफ क्रेडिट क्रिएशन बैंक लोन नहीं कर पा रही है दिस इज रॉन्ग सेकेंड इज इंक्रीज इन एस एल आर इन द बैंक नॉट एस एल आर सी आर आर वेरी सिमिलर कॉन्सेप्ट तो एस एल आर भी अगर इंक्रीज होगा देन दैट मनी द बैंक हैज टू कीप असाइड तो उसके कारण भी लिक्विडिटी uh, इंक्रीज नहीं हो रहा है सी इज इंक्रीज इन द बैंकिंग हैबिट ऑफ पीपल नो दिस सीम्स करेक्ट बिकॉज अगर बैंकिंग हैबिट लोगों का बढ़ेगा दैट मींस दे आर डिपॉजिटिंग मोर एंड मनी मोर मनी इन द बैंक अब बैंक के पास ज्यादा पैसा डिपॉजिट हो रहा है मींस दे आर एबल टू लोन आउट मोर मनी तो उससे लिक्विडिटी बढ़ रहा है मतलब मनी मल्टीप्लाई बढ़ रहा है सो दिस इज करेक्ट And D increase in the population of the country. Now population of the country बढ़ेगा तो maybe it is possible that more economic activity will happen, more um, um, liquidity, more banking habits, more liquidity in the economy. But this is not sure because population बढ़ा does not mean all of them has banking accounts, right? Maybe उनके पास bank accounts नहीं हैं, they are not able to. Um, deposit money in the bank so again we cannot say for sure this is correct therefore this is wrong and the most correct answer is c all right next question from 2020 uh try to attempt it uh the question is if you withdraw 1 lakh in cash from your demand deposit account at your bank the immediate effect on aggregate money supply in the economy will be okay so yahan pe demand deposit account ki baat kar rahe hain that means you have a saving account saving account in the bank mara state bank of india mein savings account hai and wahan se tumne 1 lakh rupya withdraw kiya so what that effect that will have on the aggregate money supply in the economy so here you should know what is money supply Now money supply के चार कैलकुलेशन भी स्टडी एम वन एम टू एम थ्री एम फोर राइट बट ऑल फोर टाइप्स ऑफ मनी सप्लाई कैलकुलेशन आर वेरी सिमिलर किसी में कुछ कुछ टाइम डिपॉजिट एड हो जाते हैं ऑल दैट बट स्टिल इवन द मोस्ट नैरो मेजर ऑफ मनी सप्लाई इज मनी इन सर्कुलेशन plus money in bank okay this is the demand deposits so the act of withdrawing 1 lakh rupee from your uh, demand deposit account तो वो तुम्हारा मनी इन बैंक से निकल के मनी इन सर्कुलेशन में चला जा रहा है तो तुम्हारा मनी सप्लाई का क्या होगा देर विल बी नो डिफरेंस करेक्ट बिकॉज मनी इन बैंक विल डिक्रीज बाय वन लाख बट मनी इन सर्कुलेशन विल इंक्रीज बाय वन लाख सो द सम ऑफ मनी इन सर्कुलेशन प्लस मनी इन बैंक विल रिमेन सेम ओके सो देर विल बी नो डिफरेंस इन मनी सप्लाई एटली एटलीस्ट इमीडिएट इफेक्ट ये इंपॉर्टेंट है तो इमीडिएट में तो कोई डिफरेंस नहीं आएगा सो द आंसर विल बी नॉट ए नॉट बी नॉट सी बट डी टू लीव इट अनचेंज ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन दिस वॉज आस्ट इन टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन एंड यू कैन सी दैट दिस क्वेश्चन इन टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन वॉज अगेन रिपीटेड इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू 
राइट एंड दैट इज वाई इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू सॉल्व प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चन क्योंकि कभी कभी रिपीट भी हो जाता है एंड यू कैन गेट लकी राइट so the question is the money multiplier in an economy increases with which one of the following and we have already discussed the answer is uh, will be b increase in the banking habits of the population okay next uh, coming to inflation this is the question asked in 2021 pause the video uh, write down the answer below in the comments and then i will try to solve it All right. Let's see. Uh, with reference to the Indian economy, demand pull inflation can be caused increase by which of the following? So, um, we already know what is inflation, which is the rise in price of goods or services over time. Okay. So you get anything for hundred rupee, you get the same thing for hundred and five rupee the next year. So the inflation is five percent. Now the inflation is caused by demand pull or supply push, right? ये तो डिमांड उस गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज का बढ़ गया तो प्राइस बढ़ गया या फिर सप्लाई बॉटल आ गए सप्लाई रॉ मटेरियल्स का प्राइस बढ़ गया राइट तो ये तो सप्लाई कम हो गया तो फिर अगेन प्राइसेस विल इंक्रीज सो अगर जब भी डिमांड बढ़ता है विच मींस दैट पीपल हैव मोर मनी इन देयर हैंड तभी डिमांड बढ़ेगा ओके सो नंबर वन इज एक्सपेंशनरी पॉलिसीज जब भी एक्सपेंशनरी पॉलिसीज की बात करते हैं इवन द फिजिकल एक्सपेंशनरी पॉलिसी और द मॉनेटरी एक्सपेंशनरी पॉलिसी देन ऑलवेज देर इज इंजेक्शन ऑफ लिक्विडिटी इन द इकोनॉमी एंड विद इंजेक्शन ऑफ लिक्विडिटी पीपल हैव मोर मनी इन देयर हैंड तो ज्यादा खर्च करना चाहेंगे डिमांड विल इंक्रीज एंड इन्फ्लेशन विल राइज ओके तो येस डिमांड फुल इन्फ्लेशन होगा यहाँ सेकेंड इज फिजिकल स्टिमुलस फिजिकल स्टिमुलस इज That government has adopted a expansionary fiscal policy. So, if fiscal stimulus is there, which means government is injecting more money in the economy, so again people will have more money in their hand. So, here the demand pull inflation will be correct. Third is inflation indexing wages. Okay, which means that the wages, the income, the salary you are getting is indexed with inflation. Jitna inflation increase ho raha hai, wages bhi utna increase ho raha hai. Okay. तो अगर इन्फ्लेशन से इक्वेलेंट वेज इंक्रीज हो रहा है तो डिमांड विल रिमेन सेम राइट सपोज योर वेज इज हंड्रेड रुपी एंड द प्राइस ऑफ द गुड यू आर डिमांडिंग इज हंड्रेड रुपी देन यू आर डिमांडिंग वन यूनिट ऑफ दिस गुड तो अगर तुम्हारा इन्फ्लेशन इज फाइव परसेंट देन प्राइस विल इंक्रीज टू हंड्रेड एंड फाइव नेक्स्ट ईयर But your wage also is indexed to inflation, so your now wage is also hundred and five rupees. So again, your demand remains same. You're demanding one unit of this good, and therefore overall demand remains same. So here there will be no demand pull inflation. So this will be hmm, incorrect. Fourth is higher purchasing power. So this is very straightforward. Purchasing power बढ़ गया तुम्हारा. You are demanding more goods and services. So again, this will lead to demand pull inflation and fifth is rising interest rates rising interest rates means you will have to pay more interest rates on the loans you take so agar jyada interest le, uh, rate dena pad raha hai then you will tend to take lesser amount of loan agar kam loan loge so uh, the amount of money you have at your disposal is less which means inflation kam hoga to matlab demand on full full demand pull inflation will not happen here okay so the correct answer is 1 2 and 4 Which is A. All right. All right. Next is a uh, question asked in prelims twenty twenty one. Now pause the video. Uh, write your answer in the comments. Okay. So the question is, which one of the following is likely to be the most inflationary in its effect? Okay. So inflationary may be most inflationary. Pata karna. नंबर वन और ऑप्शन ए इज रीपेमेंट ऑफ पब्लिक डेट सो गवर्नमेंट ने उधार लिया था एंड गवर्नमेंट हैज रीपेड दैट डेट राइट सो दैट डेट हैज बीन रीपेड मे बी द गवर्नमेंट हैज टेकन इंटरनल डेट और एक्सटर्नल डेट इंटरनल डेट है तो मे बी इट हैज टेकन डेट फ्रॉम द पीपल सो रीपे कर दिया तो पीपल आर लाइकली टू हैव मोर मनी इन देयर हैंड तो यस टू सम एक्सटेंट वी कैन से डिमांड विल increase here okay 
B is borrowing from the public to finance a budget deficit. So government is experiencing a budget deficit. Public say, paisa borrow kar liya. So people will have less money in their hand. So here, demand kam hoga. C is borrowing from the banks to finance a budget deficit. Again, the government has taken money from the bank. So bank will have lesser money to give loans to the people. So ab logo ke paas kam paisa hai to wahan yahan bhi demand kam hai. Okay. And D is creation of new money to finance a budget deficit. Now government is experiencing budget deficit. So new money create kar diya. Matlab, currency print kiya. Okay. So suddenly RBI has printed currency. Now this currency has printed out of nowhere. So suddenly the amount of liquidity in the economy has increased. Okay. Without a subsequent increase in the capacity of the economy to uh, supply, produce goods and services. Okay. So as you can see, both in uh, option A may be demand increase or option D may be demand increase or but because option D may out of nowhere new money is being created. So option D say jo, uh, demand increase or that will be much higher, right? And it will be more inflationary. And that is why the correct answer will be D. This next question has been asked in prelims 2020. Try to attempt the question in the comments below. All right, let's see. Which of the factors policies were affecting the price of rice in India in the recent past? So 2020, my question pucha gaya. They're talking about recent past. So, it means that the current affairs are a little bit related to that time, but still, uh, we are answering this in 2024, but uh, let's see if we can solve it, okay? Now, we are talking about factors affecting the price of rice. Now, we know that price of anything is determined by two factors, you know? Price determined two factors, demand and supply. Right, demand and supply in the open market. So let's see. Number one is minimum support price. Okay. So minimum support price is the base price of the uh, agricultural product. Just a rice, okay. So farmers will are assured that at least minimum support price to milna hi hai. So if minimum support price ka fluctuation wa MSP is raised or MSP is decreased. So decrease to kabhi nahi hota. MSP is raised only. So MSP raised hoga to price of rice will be affected. Okay. So this is correct. Second is government trading. Government trading means government ne rice procure kar liya farmers se. Now government is selling off that rice. Agar matlab excess rice ho gaya. To selling off that rice in the open market. Now the government is uh, selling the rice in the open market which means Supply of the rice will increase in the open market. If supply increase ho gaya and demand does not increase as much, so maybe the prices will go down, right? So again, this will affect the demand and supply, and hence the price of the rice. So this is also correct. Third is government stockpiling. Government stockpiling is, I government apna buffer stock bana rahi apne godowns mein, right? Rice ka. So government has procured rice at MSP and uh, stockpiling rice in its uh, uh, go downs warehouses mein. so now again stockpiling means that the supply of rice in the open market has decreased because the government is stockpiling it so again it will affect the price yes okay fourth is consumer subsidies so some uh, sort of subsidies is provided to the consumers the consumer ko subsidy mil hai, matla, a kind of direct benefit transfer the government uh, Consumers got direct benefit transfer mil means they have more money at their disposable disposal and hence they will demand more rice. So prices of price may increase. So again, it will have an effect on the price. Yes, correct. So as we can see, uh, all these factors are affecting the price of rice in India. So the answer should be all. Correct answer, Pucha. Answer should be one, two, three, and four. Okay, so next question, coming to next question, again asked in prelims 2020. Try to attempt the question. All right, 
let's see, consider the following statements. The weightage of food in CPI, consumer price index, is higher than that in wholesale price index. Now here you have to know what is consumer price index, what is wholesale price index. So these are two ways in which you can calculate the inflation in the economy. Now, you take a basket of uh, goods and services in case of consumer price index, which is consumed by an average uh, individual in India. An average person in India will consume this basket of goods and services. And then, the current year ka price is how much, next year ka price is how much, and the differential hai, that will be your uh, rate of inflation. So, this is saying the weightage of food in CPI is higher than wholesale price index. When we wholesale price index, ka baat karte, then we are talking about wholesale level so wholesale level pe uh, services are not counted because services hamesha retail level pe uh, buy and sell hota hai wholesale level pe there is always goods but as you you'll see even if you don't uh, know the exact weightage of food in cpi and wpi you can say that a uh, wholesale level mein food ka weightage thoda kam hoga the weightage of manufactured goods will be much higher whereas for an average consumer an average consumer will consume much more food um, on an average right the food ka share of average consumer ka, that will be higher so this uh, statement looks correct second is the wpi does not capture changes in price of services while cpi does this is correct because wpi is tracking changes in prices at wholesale level ab wholesale level mein services you cannot buy and sell services in wholesale wo hamesha retail level pe hi hota hai and that is why wpi ka jo basket hai that contains only goods whereas the basket of cpi has both goods and services okay so uh, statement 2 is also correct third the Reserve Bank of India has now adopted WPI as its key measure of inflation and to decide on changing the key policy rates. Now, this you have to know, but it has been in uh, news. When uh, the Monetary Policy Committee was made, then it was uh, decided that the RBI will try to bring consumer price index within the um, band of 4% plus minus 2%, right? So, wo CPI, tha. CPI is tracked by the RBI and that is why this statement is incorrect. So, which of the following statement is our, is our correct? Answer so should be A, 1 and 2 only. All right, next question, asked in prelims 2022. Try to attempt this question in the comments below. Okay. So the question is, uh, with reference to the Indian economy, consider the following statement. Statement one is, if the inflation is too high, Reserve Bank of India is likely to buy government securities. So inflation is high, which means RBI would like to decrease inflation or decrease money supply in the economy. So money supply come karna. Now what is happening here? The government is buying government securities. When the government is buying government securities, which means the government is paying money to the people, right? Paying money to the individuals, uh, banks, private companies who have bought the, who have government securities. So, what will happen? Liquidity is increasing, money supply is increasing. Okay, so it is not going to control inflation. Therefore, this statement is incorrect. Second is if rupee is rapidly depreciating. RBI is likely to sell dollars in the market. Now again, rupee is depreciating. Rupee is depreciating, which means demand for rupees is going down, right? Because if the demand for rupee was going up, then rupee would appreciate. Rupee depreciate or the demand come over. Now what RBI would like to do to stabilize the exchange rate is demand ko increase karna chahegi. RBI. Now what the RBI is doing is selling dollars in the market. Dollar ko aga market mein sell kar rahi hai RBI which means that uh, the demand for uh, rupee will increase hai na? Kyunki dollar ko buy karne ke liye you need rupees and therefore 
रुपए का डेप्रीशिएशन रोका जाएगा राइट सो दिस इज करेक्ट थर्ड इज इफ इंटरेस्ट रेट इन द यूएसए और यूरोपियन यूनियन वे टू फॉल दैट इज लाइकली टू इंड्यूस आरबीआई टू बाय डॉलर ओके सो लेट्स सी इंटरेस्ट रेट इन यूएसए इज फॉलिंग इंटरेस्ट रेट यूएसए में फॉल कर रहा है मतलब नाउ द पीपल इन यूएसए हैव मोर मनी इन देयर हैंड बिकॉज दे आर एबल टू बोरो एट वेरी लेस इंटरेस्ट रेट्स तो उनके पास डॉलर्स ज्यादा है हाथ में दे वुड लाइक टू इन्वेस्ट दैट डॉलर टू गेट हाई रिटर्न तो वो कहाँ इन्वेस्ट करेंगे यूएसए में तो करेंगे नहीं वहाँ इंटरेस्ट रेट कम है सो दे विल कम टू इंडिया ओके तो इंडिया के अंदर बहुत फॉरन पोर्टफोलियो इन्वेस्टमेंट आ जाएगा हॉट मनी ना इंडिया में इन्वेस्ट करेंगे तो रुपी में इन्वेस्ट करना पड़ेगा तो रुपी का डिमांड बढ़ेगा तो रुपी विल स्टार्ट अप्रिसिएटिंग ओके रुपी के लिए डिमांड बढ़ गया रुपी अप्रिशिएट कर रहा है नाउ द आर बी वॉन्ट्स टू स्टेबलाइज द एक्सचेंज रेट स्टेबलाइज एक्सचेंज रेट करने के लिए दे विल ट्राई टू इंजेक्ट मोर रुपी इन द मार्केट रुपी का सप्लाई बढ़ाना चाहेंगे रुपी का सप्लाई कैसे बढ़ेगा अगर वो डॉलर खरीदेंगे है ना दे विल बाय डॉलर तो दैट विल इंक्रीज द सप्लाई ऑफ रुपी इन द मार्केट सो स्टेटमेंट री ऑल्सो लुक्स करेक्ट विच मीन्स विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट ऑप्शन बी टू एंड थ्री ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम प्रिलिम्स ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू ओके पॉज द वीडियो अटेंड द वीडियो and then come back uh, the question is in india which one of the following is responsible for maintaining price stability by controlling inflation so it's easy koi question ho hi nahi sakta hai na kyunki price stability matlab inflation ko control karna aur inflation control karna kiska mandate hai the mandate of central bank of india which is the reserve bank of india so very straightforward answer is d next let's tackle questions on monetary policy so this question has been asked in prelims 2023 or read the question try to answer it in the comments below okay let's see uh consider the following statements the statement one is in the post pandemic recent past many central banks worldwide has carried out interest rate hikes okay so this uh, statement is correct if you have been reading the news uh, you can easily answer this because of the covid and also because of uh, the russia ukraine war and the disruption of uh, supply chains across the world a lot of inflation had happened ab inflation ko tackle karne ke liye the central bank would like to reduce liquidity in the economy and uske liye interest rate hike karna padega so the uh, central banks of usa and uh, europe have actually carried out interest rate hikes so which is the policy of monetary tightening that we study about so statement 1 is correct second central banks generally assume that they have the ability to counteract the rising consumer prices via monetary policy means okay so statement 2 is also correct because that is the monetary policy of the central banks jaise rbi hai to rbi always tries to stabilize the inflation rate and keep it within the limit of 4% plus minus 2% and uske liye wo kya karta hai they have several monetary policy means like um, reserve ratio like crr slr or uh, repo rates right so ye that is uh, applicable for all the central banks so statement 2 is also correct and statement 2 also is an explanation of statement 1 okay so which of the following is correct in respect of above statement is both statement 1 and 2 are correct and statement 2 is the correct explanation of statement 1 all right so this is correct uh, b is uh, statement 2 is not the correct explanation of statement 1 so we think this is wrong you know or c and d is incorrect because both statements are right so the answer is a okay All right. Next question is from Prelims twenty twenty. Ah, try to solve the question in the comments below. 
Uh, let's see if the RBI decides to adopt an expansionist monetary policy. Expansionist monetary policy means RBI try kar hai, money supply increase karne ka. Na? Which of the following would it not do? The important term is not do. Because if you don't note not, uh, note and you would answer you what the RBI will do and then uh, you would ask the question but you did it silly mistake. You didn't study it well. So this is important to not do. So the statement one is cut and optimize statutory liquidity ratio. So when RBI will cut statutory liquidity ratio which means bank has to keep aside lesser amount as SLR. If bank has SLR mein lesser amount rakhna hai, which means bank has more money to lend. If lending increase ho gaya, to money supply will also increase. Okay. Second is increase marginal standing facility rate. Right? Now, so you should know what is marginal standing facility rate. MSF is the interest uh, charged by RBA for very short term overnight uh, borrowings. Right? So if you borrow for the RBI has rate increase kar liya, which means banks are able to borrow lesser amount. Because interest rate uh, increase ho gaya, to isse kya hoga? money supply will decrease. And third is cut the bank rate and repo rate. If the RBI has cut the bank rate and repo rate, cut kar liya, uh, bank rate and repo rate are again interest rates charged by RBI to lend to the bank. If the bank has borrow for lesser interest, lag hai, banks will borrow more. And banks will borrow more, then money supply will increase. So the correct answer using the code given below. So one and three, the RBI will do, and two is RBI will not do. And the question is asking what it would not do. So answer will be two only. Right? not suddenly you'll see okay, one and three is correct. So answer would be C. And tomorrow question galat ho jayega. To be kept in mind, these little little things should be very kept in mind. All right, next question is uh, from Prelims 2019. Try to attempt the question in the comments below. Okay, let's see which one of the following is not the most likely measure the government RBI takes to stop the slide of Indian rupee. So the Indian rupee is sliding, means Indian rupee is depreciating. Indian rupee ka value come over. Now to stop the slide of Indian rupee, government or the RBI would take steps to increase the demand of Indian rupee. Um, demand of Indian rupee ka se, uh, ensure karegi. Let's see. So the question uh, option A is curbing imports of non-essential goods and promoting exports. So uh, imports ko curb kar rahe, imports has decreased. Imports are decreased means about not dollar niche you can import carnegie you need dollars now you don't need dollars which means you don't have to convert rupee into dollar the demand of uh, rupee will increase promoting exports exports are the aura if india is uh, exporting more goods and services which means foreign buyers will require more rupee to buy these indian exports to so, the rupees demand karenge. This may be rupee ka demand badega. Okay. So this is the step that government or the RBI will take. Second is encouraging Indian borrowers to issue rupee denominated masala bonds. Now masala bonds are bonds which are floated in foreign exchange markets which are rupee denominated. Right. So agar kisi ko masala bond hai, to they will require rupees which means rupee ka demand bada. Okay. So this is again a step that the government or the RBI will take. Third is easing conditions related to external commercial borrowing. So external commercial borrowing is how private companies raise funds for their uh, company to foreign market. You know, foreign me kisi bank se loan liya Indian company ne. So again, agar Indian company loan le rahi hai, to uh, it will increase the demand for rupees. Okay. You can loan mill Indian company. Ko. And D is following an expansionary monetary policy. If the RBI has adopted an expansionary monetary policy. Now expansionary monetary policy uh, adopt here, which means people uh, in the economy have uh, more money in their hand, which means 
सप्लाई ऑफ रुपीस हैज इंक्रीज्ड है ना तो सप्लाई ऑफ रुपीस हैज इंक्रीज्ड व्हिच विल मीन डिमांड हैज डिक्रीज्ड सो दिस इज समथिंग दैट द आरबीआई विल नॉट डू ओके सो द आंसर विल बी डी ओके नेक्स्ट लेट्स टेक अप सम क्वेश्चंस फ्रॉम पब्लिक फाइनेंस This question is from UPSC Prelims 2022. So try to solve it in the comments. चलो देखते हैं क्या है. With reference to Indian economy, consider the following statements. A share of the household finance savings goes towards government borrowings. तो so household finance saving मतलब तुम्हारे घर में जितना पैसा तुम save कर रहे हो उसका share will go towards government borrowing. So which is correct? क्योंकि अगर तुम यू हैव सेव सम मनी यू मे वॉन्ट टू बाई गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज राइट या फिर ट्रेजरी बॉन्ड्स लोगे या फिर डेटेड गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज खरीदोगे एंड दैट इज वन वे थ्रू विच गवर्नमेंट बोरोज फ्रॉम इट्स पीपल सो दिस इज करेक्ट सेकेंड डेटेड सिक्योरिटीज इशूड एट मार्केट रिलेटेड रेट्स इन ऑप्शन फॉर्म अ लार्ज कंपोनेंट ऑफ इंटरनल डेट ओके सो यू हैव टू नो अबाउट इंटरनल डेट the debt of uh, the government can be of two types agar uh, internal hamare uh, domestic market se borrow karti hai from uh, banks or individuals or companies so that is internal debt if the international market se borrow karegi maybe bilateral loans or multilateral loans from world bank or imf so that is external debt now internal debt mein these debted securities at market related rates in options form a large component which is again correct because whenever the government wants to take uh, borrow from the uh, domestic market it will issue these dated securities rbi will issue these dated securities on behalf of the government so it will be a large component hota hai so anyway the internal debt is around 95% or external debt is around 5% of uh, indian government so is a large chunk will be dated securities so again this statement is seems correct so which of the above statement is are correct should be both one and two All right. Next question. I asked in prelims, twenty twenty one. Which among the following steps is most likely to be taken at the time of economic recession? So see, it is a situation of recession. Recession me kya hota hai? Economic activities are going down. So in this situation. The government will want to provide a stimulus to the economy. Stimulus कैसे मिलेगा? If the government injects liquidity in the market, right? Liquidity increase करना है, money supply increase करना है, so government कैसे money supply increase कर सकती है? A is cut in tax rates accompanied by increase in interest rate. Okay, so tax rate कम कर दिया, तो government को लोगों को कम tax pay करना पड़ रहा है, companies को कम tax pay करना पड़ रहा है, तो money supply increase होगा. Yes, so this is correct. Accompanied by increase in interest rate. अब इंटरेस्ट रेट बढ़ा दिया है इंटरेस्ट रेट अगर बढ़ जाएगा तो कंपनीज और इंडिविजुअल्स लोन्स नहीं ले पाएंगे बिकॉज हाई इंटरेस्ट रेट है हाई इंटरेस्ट रेट पेड करना पड़ेगा तो लोन्स कम लेंगे तो उससे मनी सप्लाई कम हो जाएगा ओके तो ऑन वन हैंड हाफ ऑफ दिस स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट लेकिन अदर हाफ इज इन करेक्ट सो दिस विल नॉट बी द करेक्ट आंसर B, let's see. Increase in expenditure on public projects. Okay, so public projects, my government expenditure will increase. Now, once the government expenditure expenditure in public projects will increase, government will build uh, more roads, more railways, warehouses, schools, uh, hospitals. Agar in public projects, my government or kharcha karne lagegi, then a lot of people will get employment. And agar lo logo ko employment milna milne lagega, they will get uh, wages, they will get salaries. so money supply will increase okay so this is the something that the government will do so b is correct c is increase in tax rates accompanied by reduction of interest rate ab tax rate bada diya to money supply kam ho jayega and interest rate kam kar diya to money supply will increase so this is the opposite of statement a but isme bhi half statement is correct half statement is incorrect so this is also not correct and d is reduction of expenditure on public projects which is opposite of statement b 
अगर पब्लिक प्रोजेक्ट्स में एक्सपेंडिचर कम कर दिया तो लोगों के पास एम्प्लॉयमेंट कम हो गया और जिससे क्या हुआ मनी सप्लाई कम हो गया सो ओवरऑल द मोस्ट करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन बी ओके राइट नेक्स्ट लेट्स टेक अप सम क्वेश्चंस फ्रॉम टैक्सेशन सो दिस इज अ क्वेश्चन आस्ट एंड लास्ट ईयर प्रिलिम्स ट्राई टू सॉल्व इट एंड इन द कमेंट्स बिलो okay let's see consider the following so 1 2 3 4 5 4 of the horizontal tax devaluation the 15th finance commission used how many of the above criteria other than population area and income distance all right so uh we all know what finance commission is finance commission recommends on the uh, formula for the tax devaluation of the central uh, divisible tax pool between states right उसके लिए बहुत सारा क्राइटेरिया यूज कर दिया फाइनेंस कमीशन सो दिस इज समथिंग दैट यू मस्ट हैव स्टडीड एज पार्ट ऑफ योर प्रिपरेशन क्योंकि फाइनेंस कमीशन हमेशा इंपॉर्टेंट रहता है तो दिस इज समथिंग यू हैव टू नो राइट सो द फिफ्टींथ फाइनेंस कमीशन ने जो रेकमेंड किया था उसमें पॉपुलेशन एरिया इनकम डिस्टेंस तो था ही अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट देर वे थ्री अदर क्राइटेरिया राइट नंबर वन वॉज डेमोग्राफिक परफॉर्मेंस विच इज हाउ द स्टेट हैज performed with respect to all their demographic uh, performance indicators like your fertility rate your infant mortality rate the sex ratio wagaira so this is correct second is forest and ecology again this is one of the criteria that was used so it rewarded the efforts of the states towards uh, preservation of natural resources right this was also one of the criteria the governance reforms is all the uh, koi criteria nahi tha also you can say that governance reforms govern Finance reforms is something that is not very quantifiable, right? So, how do you decide that which state has done the best reform or which state has not done the best reform? So, because uh, of those reasons, this is not correct. Government's uh, governance reforms was not a criteria. Stable government was also not a criteria, and also stable government is very subjective, right? Which which government is more stable, less um, stable? ऑल्सो गवर्नमेंट का एफर्ट इसमें काउंट नहीं कर सकते बिकॉज स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट इज समथिंग दैट इज अ फंक्शन ऑफ द वोटिंग पैटर्न ऑफ द पीपल देयर है ना तो बाई लॉजिक ऑल्सो दिस सीम्स रॉन्ग एंड फिफ्थ इज टैक्स एंड फिजिकल एफर्ट्स नाउ दिस इज करेक्ट बिकॉज इफ द गवर्नमेंट टेक्स एफर्ट्स टू इंक्रीज इट्स टैक्स बॉयसी इंक्रीज इट्स टैक्स एफिशियंसी टैक्स बेस तो उसको रिवॉर्ड उसका रिवॉर्ड भी मिलना चाहिए सो फिफ्थ इज अगेन करेक्ट so your correct answer will be b only 3 okay let's take up this question from prelims 2021 all right uh, pause the video try to attempt the question and then come back which one of the following effects of creation of black money which so we are talking about black money in india has been the main cause of worry to the government of india so obviously the government of india is worried about uh, the black money the parallel economy it creates hai na to sabse jyada worry kaun sa hai let's see a diversion of resources to the purchase of real estate and investment in luxury housing okay this is one of the cause of worry lekin uh, let's see other uh, statements itna bada worry nahi hai statement in unproduct investment in unproductive activities and purchase of precious stones jewelry gold so again very similar statement to statement 1 you know see is large donation to political parties and growth of regionalism so this is uh, again an issue lekin government uh, is also a political party so maybe they are not worried as much about this the fourth is loss of revenue to the state exchequer due to tax evasion now this is a big point of uh, worry for the central government or the government of india because tax evasion se kya hoga it will have a direct effect on the revenue of the government hai na to jo revenue hai budget revenue wo kafi kam ho jayega because there is a lot of tax evasion happening and that is why i think the most appropriate answer will be d let's tackle some previous year questions from banking so this is your uh, question from last year prelims try to attempt it in the comments below okay 
consider the following statement with reference to India. According to Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises Development Act of 2006, the medium enterprises are those with investments in plant and machinery between 15 crore and 25 crore. Now, this is something uh, you would have to know. And I don't think there is any way around it. So uh, MSME Act of 2006 divides the enterprises into micro, small, and medium, right? And uh, uh, with respect to investment in plant and machinery, the criteria is uh, 1 crore for micro, 10 crore for small, and 50 crore for medium enterprises. There is also the criteria of turnover. Usme micro ke liye hota hai up to 5 crore, small ke liye up to 50 crore, and medium ke liye up to 250 crore. 250 crore. So as you can see, for the medium enterprise, the investment in plant and machinery can be up to 550 crores. This statement is incorrect. Second is all bank loans to micro, small, and medium enterprise qualify under the priority sector. So yes, this is correct. As per the policy of RBI, everything is all bank loans are qualified under priority sector. So the which of the following statement is are correct should be two only. All right. Now, next, uh, let's take this question from prelims 2022. With reference to Bank Board Bureau, which of the following statement are correct? Number one is the governor of RBI is the chairman of Bank Board Bureau. Now, this statement we know as incorrect because the chairman of Bank Board Bureau is nominated by the government of India. Okay. This is incorrect. Now, as soon as you see this is incorrect, statement 1, C and D is eliminated. Answer would be 2 only. Okay. Let's see statement 2. Bank Board Bureau recommends for the selection of heads for public sector bank. So, yes, this is correct. And third is Bank Board Bureau helps the public sector bank in developing strategies and capital. Yeah, sorry, yeah, this is the part of the third statement, capital raising plans. So yes, this is also uh, the mandate of Bank Board Bureau. Bank Board Bureau was created to improve the financial conditions of the bank. So both second and third is done by the Bank Board Bureau. The answer would be B, 2 and 3. All right. Now, uh, you know, uh, you can uh, also take use of this tricks. This other statement, you know, to be false. And uh, the correct answer is 1 and 2, 2 and 3, 3, 1 and 3. is type of other options. Hai. So you can always try to eliminate the wrong options. So just as my one um, incorrect identify, kar liya, so we can easily get the answer as B. Right? Obviously, this will not work with options like uh, how many of these sentences are correct. Uh, one, two, three. Yes, sorry, jo options are in this. This will not work. But if these types of options you get, then this can be a good trick to have. Okay. So let's see uh, this question from 2021. Try to answer it in the comments. Okay, now let's solve. In India, the central bank's function as the lender of last resort usually refers to which of the following? So central bank, the RBI is also known as lender of last resort. Now we know lender of last resort, why do we call it? Because the India ke commercial banks are lending they will go to other banks and uh, try to procure some uh, funds from there. If they have a short term mein shortfall, ho Agar se nahi hota hai, to at least they can go to the RBI to lend money. Hai na? That is usually why is it called lender of last resort. So statement one is lending to trade and industry body when they fail to borrow from other sources. So this is incorrect because it is not talking about banks. So one is incorrect. This is eliminated. Provide liquidity to the banks having a temporary crisis. So this is the correct answer. So again, this is eliminated. You have answers either two or two and three. Third is lending to government to finance budgetary deficit. Now this is the statement itself is correct. Because when the government has a budgetary deficit, for uh, deficit finance, ke liye, the government goes to RBI. Ke paas jati hai. But this is not why the central bank is known as the lender of last resort. The lender of last resort is called because banks are able to go there. right? So again, this statement, although it is correct, in the context of lender of last resort, this is incorrect. 
So the answer will be two only. All right. So you also also have to keep in mind. Sometimes they will give correct statements. But in question, they have asked something else. You know. Let's take this question from twenty one. Uh, pause the video, try to answer it in the comments, and then come back. Okay, consider the following statements. The government of the governor of Reserve Bank of India is appointed by the central government. Okay, this is correct. The central government appoints the government of RBI. Correct, Ayya? Certain provisions in the Constitution of India give the central government the right to issue directions to the RBI in public interest. Okay, so the central government does have certain uh, rights to issue directions to rbi but that comes from the rbi act okay constitution may i have not seen anything written like this constitution may aisa kuch mentioned nahi hai. But that is why this is incorrect okay. and third is the governor of the rbi draws his power from the rbi act so the whole uh, reserve bank of india is formed under the rbi act of 1934 so the governor also draws his power from there so this again this statement is correct so which of the following statement are correct the answer would be c one and three only okay let's take the next question again from 21 uh take a moment try to answer it uh, in the comments and then come back with reference to urban cooperative banks. Now we're talking about cooperative banks here in India. Consider the following statement. Number one is they're supervised and regulated by local boards set up by state governments. Now, um, the statement is they're regulated by local boards set up by state government. Is Even by looking at it, you can say that this does not uh, seem correct. Because local board, why would it... Uh, uh, regulate an urban cooperative body which is a scheduled bank right even urban cooperative banks are a scheduled bank for me the jitne bhi scheduled banks and they are always regulated by the rbi and therefore the urban cooperative banks are also regulated by rbi so this statement is incorrect you know so which of the following statement is are correct so suddenly you see that three options are eliminated and you are left with only b okay so just by eliminating one question, you are able to answer. But let's see other two statements. Uh, second is they can issue equity shares and preference shares. Okay. Now, uh, even if you don't know, you are able to answer, but uh, the urban cooperative banks, they function as scheduled banks. So they have all the powers of the scheduled bank. So scheduled bank, just say equity share or preference share issue, kar hai. So the urban cooperative banks can also do so. Okay. And third is they were brought under the purview of Banking Regulation Act 1949 through an amendment in 1996. So this statement is also correct that they are under the purview of Banking Regulation Act and that is how the Reserve Bank of India is able to regulate them. Okay. So the answer would be two and three only. All right. Next question is from uh, Prelims 2020. Now pause, answer the question and then come back. What is the importance of the term interest coverage ratio of a firm in India? Now, here you have to know what interest coverage ratio is. So, uh, interest coverage ratio kya hota hai? Ki jab bhi, uh, you know, whenever a company or a firm comes to a bank to seek a loan, so the bank would observe their interest coverage ratio. This time, interest coverage, coverage ratio is your bank ka earning hota hai, bit, is the ratio of banks earning before. Uh, uh, whatever interest uh, that company is paying on the loans it has taken and you know, whatever the taxes they are paying. So, companies earning before interest or taxes divided by the company's interest expenses. Right, this is interest coverage ratio. So as you can see, if company jitna kama rahi hai, agar if the company is also spending the same amount in paying back back just the interest on the various loans the company has taken, 
तो मतलब आईसीआर विल बी इक्वल टू वन एंड द कंपनीज फाइनेंशियल हेल्थ विल बी क्वाइट पुअर क्योंकि कुछ एक्स्ट्रा प्रॉफिट नहीं आ रहा है कंपनी को इसीलिए हायर द वैल्यू ऑफ आईसीआर बेटर द हेल्थ ऑफ द कंपनी विल बी है ना सो स्टेटमेंट वन इज इट हेल्प्स इन अंडरस्टैंडिंग द प्रेजेंट रिस्क ऑफ अ फॉर्म दैट हैव दैट अ बैंक इज गोइंग टू गिव अ लोन टू सो दिस स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट कितना रिस्क बैंक के पास है तो बैंक विल ऑब्जर्व द इंटरेस्ट कवरेज रेशियो ऑफ दैट फॉर्म अगर इंटरेस्ट कवरेज रेशियो इज वेरी हाई देन द बैंक इज हैप्पी टू गिव लोन्स अगर वो काफी लो है लाइक वन है इवन टर्म थोड़ा सा वन से थोड़ा सा ऊपर है देन द बैंक इतना उसने फॉर्म ने लोन ले रखा है कि उसका इंटरेस्ट ही पे करने में मैक्सिमम शेयर ऑफ इट्स अर्निंग इज गोइंग देन उसको और लोन देने से फायदा नहीं होता बिकॉज ऑल डेट रिटर्न हो जाएगा राइट right? अगर आई सी आर वन से कम हुआ तो फिर तो ऑलमोस्ट uh, उतना कमा भी नहीं रही है वो फॉर्म जितना उसको इंटरेस्ट देना पड़ रहा है सो दिस वे द बैंक कैन गेज की क्या रिस्क है ना सो स्टेटमेंट वन इज करेक्ट सेकेंड इट हेल्प इन एवेलुएटिंग द इमर्जिंग रिस्क ऑफ अ फॉर्म दैट अ बैंक इज गोइंग टू गिव लोन टू सो येस दिस ऑल्सो सेम्स करेक्ट इतना रिस्क है प्रेजेंट रिस्क ऑल्सो इमर्जिंग रिस्क वॉट द रिस्क इज गोइंग टू बी सो दिस ऑल्सो सेम्स करेक्ट थर्ड इज higher a firms higher a borrowing firms level of interest coverage ratio the worse is its ability to service its debt so this statement is wrong because if the interest coverage ratio is very high which means that the company's earning is quite a lot in compared to whatever the obligations of the company is in respect of paying the interest rates on its uh, debt so this statement is incorrect so select the correct answer using the code given below so the correct uh, answer would be 1 and 2 okay all right next uh, let's see a question from prelims 2019 okay try to solve this question you can pause the video all right let's see consider the following statement the reserve bank of india recent directives relating to storage of payment systems data popularly known as data diktat command the payment systems provided that okay so straightforward this is a current affairs question from 2019 so yeah, don't be worried that you are not able to solve it in 2024 us samay current affairs news mein tha abhi nahi hai so you wouldn't know the answer okay so let's try to solve it anyway RBI has given a directive to storage relating to storage of payment system data. So all the private companies, public companies who are involved in payment systems, right? May it may be commercial banks, just so your payment system services provide carry, or it may be some wallets like your uh, Airtel wallet, Paytm wallet, Phone Pay, etc. Who are providing payment systems. So उन का जो data है वो storage कैसे किया जाए उस पे एक directive दी RBI ने. okay so statement one is they shall ensure that the entire data relating to payment system operated by them are stored in system only in india okay so this uh, sounds like correct kyunki if the rbi allows them to be stored outside india then the national security the financial security of the country will be compromised so statement one is correct second is they shall ensure that the system are owned and operated by public sector enterprises now this seems like an overkill because agar a private company was providing payment system uh, payment uh, services then they should not be uh, forced to um, uh, transfer their data to a public sector enterprise hai na so this is incorrect third is they shall submit the consolidated uh, consolidated system audit report to controller and auditor general of india by the end of the calendar year okay now again this seems incorrect because why would they give uh, all the uh, data to cag cag ka expertise nahi hai isme now cag is mainly involved with financial activities of the government or uh, some other entities hai na to jo storage data hai payment storage data which is some technical data cag may not be equipped to function in this regard and also it is a directive of rbi so rbi would want itself uh want the these uh, payment system companies to submit the data to them and that is why statement 3 is also incorrect so which of the following statement is are correct should be one only all right now let's take uh, another question from 
which of the following is not included in the assets of commercial branch. So asset, so commercial banks, any entity has assets and liabilities, right? So if you talk about yourself, if you have any property, if you have any, um, you know, some investment done, those are your assets or tumare liabilities maybe you have taken some loan maybe you have borrowed money from a friend from family those are your liabilities so similarly for commercial banks assets and liabilities are there so advances if the, the commercial bank is giving given out loans so that is an asset for the bank because that loan is earning interest that loan has to be paid back to the commercial bank this is an asset deposits deposits is money that the people have deposited in the bank. So wo ek liability ho jayega bank ke liye because usme interest dena hai bank ko. That money has to be again paid back to the customer. So this is a liability. Investments. Now investments is again a type of asset. Kyunki bank ko isme returns mil raha hai. Okay. And money at call and short notice. Now, money and uh, at uh, call and short notice is again a um, money market instruments. So the bank have these avenues available from them. So, aisa kuch liability to nahi hai pe. so the good answer would be B deposits. Okay. Let's take another question from prelims 2019. Uh, very straightforward question. The chairman of public sector bank are selected by so. We all know that the public sector bankers are chairman to select technically the government has created a new body, which is the bank board bureau. And earlier the system was different, but once the bank board bureau was set up, so it became the mandate of bank board bureau to select chairman of public sector banks. So and answer would be your A. Okay. Another question from 19. Uh, pause the video, take a moment to give the answer in the comments below. And uh, then let's try to solve it together. Now, what was the purpose of inter-creditor agreement signed by Indian banks and financial institutions recently? So again, this is a current affairs question from 2019. Okay, so if you have not heard of inter-creditor agreement, not a big deal. Okay, so this inter-creditor agreement was an agreement between uh, all the banks and financial institutions uh, of India to you know, uh, reduce their bad loans. Okay. So uh, option is to lessen government of India's perennial burden of fiscal deficit and current account deficit. Mm, no. Vasebi, this is a agreement between Indian banks and financial institutions. So why, how would they take um, decisions on behalf of government of India? So this statement is going to be wrong, even by logic. To support, second is to support infrastructure project of central and state governments. Again, why would they um, decide to support infrastructure project of the government? Okay. This statement is also wrong. Third is to act as independent regulator in case of applications for loans of 50 crore or more. Okay. Now, uh, this uh, is uh, a little more plausible statement. Ki wo apne, uh, independent regulator le, but if uh, you would have read the news, then this is also incorrect. Okay. And these to aim at faster resolution of stressed assets of 50 crore or more, which are under consortium lending. Consortium lending is that lending is done by more than more than one bank is involved in this lending. Okay. So same person has taken loans from a few different banks. So usme, obviously. So if the agar resolution karna then bank will have to come together and cooperate. So this statement is correct. It is correct. Okay. All right. Next, uh, let's take some questions from the financial market chapter. This question from twenty twenty three. Okay. So again, pause the video. Try to answer it in the comments. Okay, let's see. In the context of finance, the term beta a reference to. Okay. So financial market may you are talking about beta. So tum log agar, you know, if you have invested done in some investments in the stock market or in general, I've read about uh, 
read the financial news in newspapers. The terms are the alpha, beta, all these terms keep coming up. Okay. So this is the beta is the uh, volatility of certain stocks or a, a group of stock is a mutual fund. Ka bhi, hai na? So in uh, terms of how much the market is going up and down, what is the level of volatility with respect to that particular stock. So if value one, hai, to matlab, the, agar market 10% upar ja hai, then the value of stock will also go up by 10%. Okay. And if the beta is higher 1.5, then market goes up by 10%, then the value of that stock goes up by 15%. Okay. So you can earn more profit. Like in agar market goes down by 10%, then the value of those that stock will go down by 15%. Okay. So higher risk, higher reward. The term beta refers to the process of simultaneous buying and selling of an asset from different platforms. No. An investment strategy of a portfolio manager to balance risk versus reward. Again, uh, uh, investment strategy. No. This is known as hedging. Right. A system. See a type of systematic risk that arises where perfect hedging is not possible. Again, this does not look like the correct definition. And D is a numeric value that measures the fluctuation of a stock to changes in the overall stock market. So yes, this is correct because it is the value given to the measurement of uh, volatility of that stock. You know? so the stock market is up down ja hai on that uh, scale. What is the uh, fluctuation in that particular stock or that particular group of stocks that is beta so statement d is your correct answer next is again a question from 2023 so uh pause the video try to solve this all right consider the following statement interest income from the deposits in Infrastructure Investment Trust. So we are talking about Investment Infrastructure Trust or INVETS. You know? Distributed to their investors is exempted from tax. Exempted from tax, but the dividend is taxable. Okay. Uh, we are uh, trying to find which of the following is correct in respect to our above statement. Okay. Now straightforward, you see that interest income, it is saying that it is exempted from tax, but the dividend is taxable. Now, if you look at this statement uh, and you, if you know that the dividend distribution tax was abolished in India, right? So right now, dividend mein koi tax nahi lagta hai. So it says dividend is taxable. So again, this statement is very questionable that why would interest income be exempted, but dividend will be taxable. Whereas the opposite should happen, right? So dividend is taxable is incorrect. So this statement straight away becomes incorrect. Okay, so if you see at the options, so statement uh, one is incorrect is only option D. Statement one is incorrect, statement two is correct. So answer is D. If you look at statement two, invests are recognized as borrowers under securitization and reconstruction of financial assets and enforcement of security interest act. So Surprise Act 2002 can there, they are recognized as borrowers, which is correct. Okay, so D is your answer. Next question, again, from your uh, last year prelims. So try to answer in the comments. Okay, let's see. Consider the following markets. Government bond market, hai, call money market, treasury market, stock market. How many of the above are included in capital market? So again, you have to know the, the distinction between money market and capital market, right? Money market. Capital market. Money market with less than one year. Wale jo, uh, bonds and uh, uh, securities, uh, equity, wagara, that is money market. Capital market is long term, greater than one year. Long term. We are long term. Ka baat kar so, when we long term, the government bond market, we have bought government bonds, right? So, just a dated government securities. Ho gaya. You can buy it for. Uh, long period, long period uh, maturity wale sakte ho tun, even five years, 15 years, even 40 years ke government securities. Hote so this is capital. 
call money is very short term between banks right so this is money treasury bill is again uh, government bonds for very short term less than one year so this is again money market and stock market stock market may uh, everyone invests in stock market so again usme long term kar sakte ho there is no criteria that you have to sell within one year this is again capital okay so how many of above are capital is one and four which is only two so b is your correct answer okay let's take uh, another question from 23 okay try to answer it in the comments Consider the statement in the following assets. Brand recognition. So, you invest kar rahi, you, have a, you have a company, you are investing in following assets. Hai? Brand recognition, you have invested in inventory. Inventory is you have product in the inventory. Rahe ho, so, that you are able to sell or put uh, supply constraint. Na rahe, right? So, that is inventory. That is intellectual property. Some sort of intellectual property you have invested in. You have... Uh, uh, you know, invested in um, R and D, and uske paas you have taken some uh, uh, registered the product, so patent karwaya tumne. So that is intellectual property. And fourth is mailing list of clients. This is also a type of investment because uh, once you have connects with clients, then then you have a mailing list. So how many of the above are considered intangible investment? Intangible matlab cannot touch. Okay, now straightforward two is not it because inventory is uh, you can touch the inventory, Anna. So this is incorrect. Can you the brand recognition? Can you touch? No, so this is correct. Intellectual property again you cannot touch, and mailing list of clients again it is a digital thing so you cannot touch. So the answer would be C, only three. Okay. Uh, okay, now let's take a question from 2022. Okay. Uh, spend a few moments to answer it in the comments. All right. With reference to the Indian economy, what are the advantage of inflation index bonds? So bonds are indexed to inflation. Jitna inflation padra hai, utna bonds ka uh, yield be bad, right? The returns that bond is giving also increasing. So number one, government can reduce the coupon rate on its borrowing by way of inflation index bonds. What, so what is coupon rate? Rate it is nothing but the returns that the bonds are generating, you know, the interest rates on the bonds. So when the bonds are inflation indexed, which means agar inflation five percent, maybe five percent inflation is there. So the inflation index bond will say that the interest rate or the returns they will generate is 5% plus some percent, maybe 2%. Okay. Right. So in this case, if inflation index nahi hota, then government would have to give a higher coupon rate. But if inflation index the government will give a lower coupon rate. So one is correct. Second is Inflation index bonds provide protection to investors from uncertainty regarding inflation. So that is the very definition of inflation index bonds. The, uh, inflation say protection they tia. So this is correct. Third is the interest received as well as capital gains on inflation index bonds are not taxable. Now, why would this happen? Asa to koi policy hai nahi. Hai na? Government asa policy kyu laegi? Because then the other financial instruments would become very unattractive. So this is not correct. Which of the following statements are correct? So one and two is correct. And three is not correct. So answer would be one and two only. A. All right, next let's take a question from prelims 2022. Answer it in the comments below. Okay, let's see. With reference to the expenditure made by an organization, or a company, which of the following statement is a correct? So company is doing some expenditure. Number one is acquiring new technologies, capital expenditure. Now every company has two kinds of expenditure, right? Revenue expenditure and capital expenditure. Now capital expenditures are expenditures that are uh, one-time expenditures. 
So like setting up a factory, buying new equipments, buying new technology, right? One time expenses. And this generally leads to increase or decrease in assets and liabilities of the company. Okay. Revenue is uh, expenditure, the day-to-day -day recurring expenditures of the company. Recurring expenses. So acquiring new technology is a one-time expenditure. So it's a type of capital expenditure. That's correct. Debt financing is considered capital expenditure while equity financing is considered revenue expenditure. Now your equity financing is when you sell part of the company, right? And debt financing when you have taken loans. So equity financing is uh, maybe has, you sell 10% of the company. Now you can sell it only once. You know? so one, once you have sold that part of the company, you cannot uh, sell it again. And that is why it is not revenue expenditure, but a capital expenditure, right? Similarly, debt financing is you can take uh, debts uh, very regularly, right? And that is why it's kind of a revenue expenditure. So this statement is incorrect. So the correct answer would be one only, right? Uh, another question from 2022. Okay. I hope you have answered it in the comments. Convertible bonds. Consider the following statement with respect to con convertible bonds. Okay. As there is an option to exchange the bond for equity. So that is the meaning of convertible bond. That this bond can be converted into equity at any point of time. Convertible bonds play, pay a lower interest rate of interest. Okay. Now this statement is correct because... Uh, convertible bonds ko equity may uh, convert karne ka option hai. that is that means that your uh, uh, risk is reduced once the risk is reduced you also get a lower return okay so convertible bond may generally fixed rate of return milta hai. but maybe you'll see that the company is doing quite good the value of its shares is rising then you may be tempted to convert it into uh, equity, right? Shares of the company. So and because of this facility, generally the rate of interest for the convertible bond is lower. So this statement is correct. Second, the option to convert to equity affords the bondholder a degree of indexation to rising consumer prices. Okay. So uh, the consumer prices has been rising and uh, so may convertible bond may fix rate of interest mil raha hai, so you have no indexation but as soon as you convert it into equity your equity prices grows as per inflation Take inflation badega to obviously the equity prices will also go up so uh, you get a certain degree of indexation so this statement is correct so which of the following is are correct you can say both one and two okay Let's attempt this question from 2021. With reference to India, consider the following statements. Number one, retail investor through DMAT account can invest in treasury bills, government of India debt bonds in primary market. Okay, which is correct. UK, if you are a retail investor and you have a demand a demand account, you can access the uh, bond market of the government. Uh, if you have a treasury bill, hai, uh, government securities, hai, so all those facilities are available to you. Okay, you can uh, log into the website of the platform of uh, RBI, where ye auction hai, and from there you can buy. So, for demand account, hai, so this statement is correct. Second, the negotiated dealing system, NDS ordering machine, NDS OM, is a government security trading platform of the RBI. Okay. Now, again, this is uh, an information you should know that RBI has a platform, NDS OM, where government securities trade. Okay. So, this statement is also correct. And third is Central Depository Services Limited, CDSL, is jointly promoted by RBI and Bombay Stock Exchange. All right. Now, again, this information you should know, but then you can easily 
एलिमिनेट ऑल्सो क्योंकि यहाँ पे आरबीआई इज इन्वॉल्व वाई वुड द आरबीआई बी इन्वॉल्व इन द सेकेंडरी मार्केट यहाँ पे सेकेंडरी मार्केट में बॉम्बे स्टॉक एक्सचेंज का बात हो रहा है सी डी एस एल इज अंटिटी लिस्टेड इन द स्टॉक एक्सचेंजेस है ना तो वहाँ पे आर बी आई विल नॉट बी इन्वॉल्व सी बी विल बी इन्वॉल्व इयर तो दिस स्टेटमेंट इज इन करेक्ट तो विच ऑफ द स्टेटमेंट इज आर करेक्ट विल बी बॉम्बे बी वन एंड टू ओनली राइट Let's take uh, the next question from twenty twenty one. Okay, pause the video, answer the question. Let's see. Indian government bond yields are influenced by which of the following? So we are talking about bond yields, the returns on the bonds. Okay. Um, actions of the U.S. Federal Reserve, actions of Reserve Bank of India, inflation, and short term interest rates. So bond yields is by depend on that. So you see. बॉन्ड प्राइजेस जितना हाई रहेगा बॉन्ड डील्स उतना कम रहेगा राइट द बॉन्ड प्राइज इज हाई द रिटर्न यू गेट इज लो द बॉन्ड द बॉन्ड प्राइजेस आर लो द रिटर्न यू गेट इन दैट बॉन्ड इज हाई सो बॉन्ड प्राइजेस जनरली इनवर्सली रिलेटेड टू बॉन्ड डील्ड होता है बॉन्ड प्राइजेस का जो होता है इनवर्सली रिलेटेड टू बॉन्ड डील्ड ओके नो लेट सी इफ बॉन्ड प्राइज इज इन्फ्लुएंस बाई दीज फैक्टर्स अगर यूएस फेडरल रिजर्व अपना इंटरेस्ट रेट हाई और लो कर लेगी तो दैट विल हैव यू नो इफेक्ट रिपल इफेक्ट ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड अगर यूएस फेडरल रिजर्व विल डिक्रीज द इंटरेस्ट रेट्स देन अ लॉट ऑफ लिक्विडिटी विल बी जनरेटेड तो वो बहुत सारा फॉरेन पोर्टफोलियो इन्वेस्टमेंट इंडिया आएगा तो डिमांड बढ़ जाएगी इंडिया में तो बॉन्ड प्राइजेस विल गो हाई अप so bond yields will go down similarly agar us federal reserve will increase the interest rates then there will be capital flight from india and capital flight from india then bond prices will go down so these actions will affect so this is correct actions of rbi so agar us fed kar raha hai to so rbi ke interest rate change karne se obviously it will affect the bond prices theek hai and then if there is inflation and short term interest rates mein चेंजेस होगा तो अगर इन्फ्लेशन भी हो रहा है देन अगेन देर विल बी चेंजेस इन बॉन्ड प्राइस इन्फ्लेशन अगर हाई हो गया देन सडनली द बॉन्ड्स आर नो लॉन्गर अट्रैक्टिव मोड्स ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट तो उसका प्राइस लो हो जाएगा सब बॉन्ड प्राइस लो हो जाएगा देन बॉन्ड इल्ड्स विल इंक्रीज एंड अगेन इट विल बिकम अट्रैक्टिव फॉर इन्वेस्टमेंट है ना सिमिलरली इन्फ्लेशन इज लो देन बॉन्ड इज अट्रैक्टिव मोड ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट तो फिर उसका प्राइस हाई हो जाएगा सो अगेन दिस विल ऑल्सो इन्फ्लुएंस बॉन्ड इल्ड सो द करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट इज ऑल One, two, and three. Okay, let's take the next question. Ah, uh, try to answer it. Okay, let's see. With reference to Indian economy, consider the following statements. Number one is commercial paper is a short term unsecured promissory note. So these are talking about various types of uh, money market instruments. So yeah, you should know what these money market instruments are. So commercial paper. जो शॉर्ट टर्म या मनी मार्केट इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स इशूड बाय कंपनीज राइट जो कंपनीज कमर्शियल पेपर वेरी रेप्यूटेड कंपनीज इशूज कमर्शियल पेपर्स एंड ट्राई टू रेस फंड्स फ्रॉम द मनी मार्केट तो शॉर्ट टर्म होता है अनसिक्योर्ड होता है विच इज करेक्ट हैज नो कोलाट्रल्स इन्वॉल्व एंड इज इट इज अ टाइप ऑफ प्रोमिसरी नोट सो स्टेटमेंट वन इज करेक्ट सेकेंड इज सर्टिफिकेट ऑफ डिपॉजिट is a long term instrument issued by rbi to corporation now the certificate of deposit is very similar to fixed deposit but except it is for short term so this certificate of deposit is issued by banks right so yes no the statement will be wrong third is call money short term finance used for interbank transactions so call money yes short term finance hota hai interbank uh, transactions ke liye this is correct next is zero coupon bonds are the interest bearing short term bonds issued by scheduled commercial bank for corporations okay zero coupon bonds so zero coupon bonds ka the very definition is that there is no coupons coupons is interest on the bonds right so interest bearing bol raha hai which is incorrect because zero coupons is generally sold at a discount and uh, reimbursed at face value theek okay? hai जैसे जीरो कूपन बॉन्ड होगा दैट इज अंड्रेड रुपी बॉन्ड इट विल बी सोल्ड फॉर नाइन्टी रुपीज 
एंड एट द एंड ऑफ वट एवर मेचोरिटी पीरियड इज उसको हंड्रेड रुपी में इट इज अगेन सोल्ड ओके सो इट इज नॉट इंटरेस्ट बियरिंग सो दिस इज इन करेक्ट सो विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट इज अ करेक्ट वुड बी वन एंड थ्री ओनली सी ओके All right. Let's take uh, another question from twenty twenty. In the context of Indian economy, non-financial debt includes which of the following? So again, you have non-financial debt. So debt can be financial debt and non-financial debt. So what is the difference between financial debt and non-financial debt? Financial debt are debt taken up by uh, financial entities for further investment right so if the bank will take a loan or a company will take a loan that is financial debt but non financial debt is loan taken for mainly for consumption purposes or maybe um, you know uh, in ex expenditure in some other uh, for some other reasons in some other areas okay like if you take a personal loan or if you take a loan for buying a car that is a type of non financial debt so housing loans owned by household is a non financial debt correct amount of outstanding on credit card so if you have used your credit card for shopping so again it is a non financial debt correct and treasury bills now treasury bills are again loans taken by government to uh, invest in schemes right so aisa to nahi hai ki for further making further profit government is taking up these uh, loans so treasury bills is also an example of non financial debt so select the correct answer using the code below answer would be d 1 to n 3 right next uh, let's try to solve some pyqs from agriculture so this question from 2020 uh, take a moment try to answer it in the comments all right let's see under the kisan credit card scheme short term credit support is given to farmers for which of the following purposes okay now kisan credit for this you have to know a little about the kisan credit card scheme right agar kisan credit card scheme ke bare mein nahi pata hai then maybe it may be difficult to answer this question okay now uh, let's see so one is working capital for maintenance of farm asset harvesters now generally जो किसान क्रेडिट कार्ड स्कीम के अंदर जो पैसा मिलता है वट एवर द लोन द फार्मर्स कैन गेट इज फॉर इन्वेस्टमेंट इन द वर्किंग ऑफ द फार्म है ना तो फार्म के लिए वर्किंग कैपिटल अगर चाहिए तो दैट कैन बी हेड फ्रॉम क्रेडिट किसान क्रेडिट कार्ड स्कीम लेकिन अगर कुछ uh, बड़ा इन्वेस्टमेंट करना है बिग कैपिटल इन्वेस्टमेंट यू हैव टू मेक देन किसान किसान क्रेडिट कार्ड स्कीम के अंदर वो फैसिलिटी अवेलेबल नहीं है राइट right? so number one is working capital for maintenance of farm asset uh, harvesters so working capital chahiye to ye mil sakega yes second is purchase of combined tractors and mini trucks requirement of farm now this is a big expenditure combined tractor mini trucks they have the farmers want to buy then he cannot do it on kisan credit card scheme because kisan credit card mein se working capital milega itna bada expense uh, ke liye loan nahi milega okay because for such uh, big loans you would also have to you know pledge uh, certain collateral you should have a some amount of credit history tabhi itna bada loan milega okay so this is incorrect consumption household so for any household consumption uh, for the working of the farm ke liye agar to thoda paisa chahiye to ye mil jayega yes post harvest expenses so post harvest may be if the farmer has some expenses like transportation or maybe some value addition or food processing this can be some sort of uh, uh, funds if you want you can get it through kcc scheme yes then fifth is construction of family house setting up of village cold storage facility now this is again a quite a big expenditure ghar banana hai cold storage banana hai so this is big expenditure again you will have to the, go to bank have some collateral with you have a credit credit history tabhi bank itna bada loan degi right so kisan credit card scheme again you will not be able to get it so the correct answer would be 1 3 and 4 option b right okay next uh, is a, again a question from prelims 2020 try to solve it in the comments 
Okay, let's see. In India, which of the following can be considered as public investment in agriculture? So, public investment. So, the government is doing investment in agriculture. Okay. Number one is fixing minimum support price for agriculture produce of all crops. MSP. Now, MSP is not an investment. MSP is a type of subsidy. Right? If you're providing subsidies or you're providing some sort of incentives to the farmers, then that is not an investment, not a type of public investment. Okay, so subsidy, this is not a public investment. Okay. Second is computerization of primary agriculture credit societies. So tax ka computerization, kar rahe ho, it is a type of investment, yes. Uh, third is social capital development. You are developing social capital. Social capital means you are uh, forming the relationship in the farming community, right? Many farmers maybe come together, form a cooperative or a farmer producer organization. So these type of social capital is developed. So again, yes. This is a type of public investment because it will increase the productivity of the uh, agriculture sector. Fourth is free electricity supply to farmers. Then again, this is subsidy. So this is not investment. Waiver of agriculture loan by the banking system. Again, this is a kind of subsidy. Right? Waiver of loans. This is not investment. And sixth is setting up of cold storage facilities by the government. Setting up cold storage facilities, uh, investment. Okay, so in India, which of the following can be considered public investment? Select the correct answer. So the correct answer is your uh, two, three, and six, right? You can also solve this uh, question by process of elimination, right? Just a waiver of agriculture loans by the banking system. Ye to kabhi investment nahi ho sakta, right? So five you have uh, determined as incorrect. So A, B, and D eliminate ho jayega and C would be your correct answer. Okay, let's take another question from 2020. Okay, consider the following statements. In terms of short-term credit delivery to the agriculture sector, District center cooperative banks. So we are talking about cooperative banks deliver more credit in comparison to scheduled commercial banks and regional rural banks. Now it is saying that cooperative banks give more credit than even scheduled commercial banks and regional rural banks. Now this is in the face of it seems quite incorrect because the commercial banks, scheduled commercial cooperatives are not available everywhere. Cooperatives are very limited, Matlab, obviously coffee widespread, hai, but still in comparison to the scheduled commercial banks and regional rural banks, jitne bhi Grameen Bank, wagara, unke comparison mein kafi small. Hai. Okay, so this is wrong. Also, if you look at uh, the data, you'll see that around 15% of agriculture credit is through commercial banks and 85% is through scheduled commercial banks and regional rural banks. Okay, so this statement is wrong. Second is one of the most important functions of DCCBs is to provide funds to primary agriculture credit societies. So this makes sense because to primary agriculture credit societies are, which are in villages, unko funds dena is an important function of uh, these cooperative banks. This is correct. So which of the following statement is correct? Is two only, B. All right. Next is question from 2019. Okay, try to solve it in the comments. Let's see. The economic cost of food grains to the Food Corporation of India, FCI, is minimum support price and bonus, if any, paid to the farmers plus. So FCI is procuring food from farmers at MSP, right? So MSP ho gaya plus maybe the government has... Uh, declared a bonus or the maybe state government has declared a bonus so that bonus is also economic economic cost for fci Uske alawa kya hoga? a is transport cost only b is interest cost only c is procurement incidentals and distribution cost and d is procurement incidentals and charges for go downs okay now you see 
स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड जो ओनली वाले सेंटेंसेस हैं वो काफी कम ही करेक्ट होते हैं ऑल्सो वाई वुड इट बी ओनली द ट्रांसपोर्टेशन कॉस्ट विल बी कैलकुलेटेड प्रोक्योरमेंट इंसिडेंटल प्रोक्योरमेंट करने के लिए जो पैसा लग रहा है डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन के लिए पैसा लग रहा है वो भी होना चाहिए सो दिस इज इन करेक्ट इंटरेस्ट कॉस्ट भी इन करेक्ट है क्योंकि वी आर नॉट काउंटिंग ट्रांसपोर्टेशन प्रोक्योरमेंट इंसिडेंटल इट इज बिटवीन सी एंड डी सो सी एंड डी में प्रोक्योरमेंट इंसिडेंटल दोनों में आ रहा है सो विल इट बी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन कॉस्ट और चार्जेस ऑफ गो डाउन सो जनरली द एफ सी आई विल ऑल्सो डिस्ट्रीब्यूट द फूड ट्रेन है ना तो डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन कॉस्ट विल बी द करेक्ट आंसर सो द आंसर इज सी procurement incidentals and distribution cost okay generally the go downs will be the uh, fci's own go down theek hai to unko yahan pe koi charge nahi lagta let's uh, take the next question from prelims 2022 take a moment to read the question answer it in the comments below and now let's start with reference to indian economy consider the following statements an increase in nominal effective exchange rate indicates appreciation of rupee so nominal effective exchange rate kya hota hai it is the weighted average of exchange rate of india with its major trading partners hai na so it will function uh, act as the exchange rate only jaise exchange rate uh, act karta hai waise nominal effective exchange rate will also act like that so if there is appreciation of rupee ner will near will increase hai na so this statement is correct second increase in real effective exchange rate indicates improvement in trade competitiveness so you see that uh, rear is also a calculation of exchange rate it is the uh, nominal effective exchange rate adjusted to the inflation differential between the india and its trading partners so agar rear increase hoga which means rupee is appreciating and jab bhi rupee appreciate karta hai to हमारा जो ट्रेड कॉम्पिटेटिवनेस है वो इम्प्रूव uh, होता है या डिक्लाइन करता है एक्चुअली इट डज नॉट इम्प्रूव राइट बिकॉज इफ द वैल्यू ऑफ रूपी इज इंक्रीजिंग देन इंडियन गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज विल बिकम इनकॉम्पिटेटिव इन द इंटरनेशनल मार्केट क्योंकि इंटरनेशनल मार्केट में उसका प्राइस बढ़ जाएगा राइट सो दिस स्टेटमेंट इज इन करेक्ट ओके सो फर्स्ट इज करेक्ट सेकेंड इज इन करेक्ट तो दिस अगर फर्स्ट से एलिमिनेट करना तो बी इज एलिमिनेटेड सेकेंड इज इन करेक्ट सो ई एंड डी इज एलिमिनेटेड सो वी आर लेफ्ट विथ सी ठीक है तो वी डो नॉट इवन हैव टू सॉल्व द थर्ड स्टेटमेंट मतलब सी एन इंक्रीजिंग ट्रेंड इन डोमेस्टिक इन्फ्लेशन रिलेटेड टू रिलेटेड टू इन्फ्लेशन इन अदर कंट्रीज इज लाइकली टू कॉज एन इंक्रीजिंग डाइवर्जेंस बिटवीन नीर एंड रीर विच इज करेंट बाय जस्ट बाय डेफिनेशन सो रीर इज इन्फ्लेशन एडजस्टेड नीर को अगर इन्फ्लेशन डिफरेंशियल से एडजस्ट करें तो रीर आएगा और अगर इन्फ्लेशन इंक्रीज हो रहा है रिलेटिव टू अदर कंट्रीज तो रीर का वैल्यू भी डाइवर्स करेगा सो दिस स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट सो आंसर इज सी वन एंड थ्री ओनली ओके ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम प्रेलम्स ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू सो टेक अ मोमेंट टू आंसर इट Yeah. let's see which one of the following situations best reflects indirect transfers often talked about in media recently so ek news item se ye question liya hua hai so a more current affairs based question but kafi uh, recent hai 2022 mein pucha hai so we should know this okay so indirect transfer kya hota hai in simple way i'll explain it to you so suppose there is a company a suppose it is in europe right and it wants to buy a company b in india ओके अब कंपनी ए डायरेक्टली बी को बाय करेगी तो सम सॉर्ट ऑफ इकोनॉमिक ट्रांजैक्शन फाइनेंशियल ट्रांजैक्शन इज टेकिंग प्लेस एंड इंडिया को काफी टैक्स पे करना पड़ेगा है ना आल्सो द रेगुलेटरी एनवायरनमेंट एंड अदर प्रोसीजर्स इन इंडिया इज क्वाइट कंबरसम तो ए मी नॉट वांट टू डायरेक्टली डील विद बी अब क्या है बी इज अ सब्सिडियरी ऑफ अ कंपनी सी मे बी इन अ टैक्स हेवन लाइक सिंगापुर okay so what a will do is a will directly buy c stakes in c and through this it will indirectly gain control over its subsidiary b so this is a type of indirect transfer so let's see the options 
is an Indian company investing in foreign enterprise and paying taxes to the foreign country on the profits arising out of its investment. So very direct transfer. This is not example. B is a foreign company investing in India and paying taxes to the country of its base on the profits arising out of its investment. So this is also profit direct transaction or SMA. This is also not correct. C is an Indian company purchases tangible assets in foreign country and sells such assets after their value increases and transfers the proceeds to India. So this is an example also example of a very direct transfers. Indian company is doing you know, capital gains career uske baad, profits India wage area. So this is also incorrect. D is a foreign company transfers shares and such shares derive their substantial value from assets located in India. So this is correct. The foreign company is transferring share from another country to its country and the underlying value hai, that is an asset that is located in India. So D is your correct answer. Okay, another question from 2022. Okay. Try to solve it in the comments. Let's see, consider the following statements. Tight monetary policy of US Federal Reserve would lead to capital flight. So what is happening? Tight monetary policy. So US Federal Reserve is raising the interest rates. That is tight monetary policy. Once it raises the interest rates, then the US Federal bonds, uska bhi, uh, returns in uh, wo increase ho jayega, the interest that you will earn on US Federal bonds that will increase. So all the people who have invest, prior invested in India, they will take money out of India and invest in US federal bonds to so India mein ho jayega, capital flight, right? So this is correct. Second statement, capital flight may increase the interest cost of firms with existing external commercial borrowings. Okay. So agar external commercial borrowing uh, is Indian company ne kar rakha hai, right? This ka matlab hua ki kisi foreign entity se loan le rakha hai, अब कैपिटल फ्लाइट हो गया कैपिटल फ्लाइट हो होते ही क्या हुआ रुपी का डेप्रिशिएशन हुआ रुपी का डेप्रिशिएशन हुआ मतलब दिस कंपनी विल हैव टू पे अ हायर प्राइस टू रिपे द एक्सटर्नल कमर्शियल बोरोइंग सो दिस इज करेक्ट थर्ड इज डिवैल्यूएशन ऑफ डोमेस्टिक करेंसी डिक्रीजेस द करेंसी रिस्क एसोसिएटेड विद ईसीबीज नॉट दिस डू नॉट सीम राइट बिकॉज़ देयर इज डिवैल्यूएशन ऑफ डोमेस्टिक करेंसी तो मतलब रुपी का वैल्यू इज down and rupee ka value down hai to jo external commercial borrowing kiya hai which is denominated in a foreign currency most probably dollars to uske liye agar repay karna hai to zyada rupya pay karna padega so decreases nahi hoga ye increases hona chahiye hence this statement is incorrect so which of the following is are correct it's one and two only answer should be a okay let's see the next question another question from prelims 2022 so uh, read the question, try to solve it in the comments. Okay, let's see, consider the following statement. In India, credit rating agencies are regulated by Reserve Bank of India. Now you should know what the credit rating agencies does. Credit rating agencies are in India. Mein. Um, the secret uh, stock exchanges major stocks listed hai, jo companies hai, usko credit rate, uh, rating credit rating rating that how investment worthy these companies are um, kya itka, uh, in, in companies mein investment is safe or not safe all these credit rating agencies ka jo rating hota hai, tum pata laga sakte ho, right so they are regulated by Reserve Bank of India. Now, Reserve Bank of India is not associated with the secondary market. If stock exchange has some things, where is their regulation? Where is their SEBI? So, it does not make sense that these trading, credit rating agencies be regulated by RBI. And hence, this statement is wrong. So, which of the following statements are correct? One wrong, ho gaya, so suddenly you, are, you have eliminated three options. And you are left with two and three. So, just by eliminating this one, sentence one statement you are able to reach to the answer and let's see baki to statement bhi dekhte hain the rating rating agency popularly known as icra is a public limited company so very factual statement if you know you know you don't know you don't know so generally if the statement is correct this is a public limited company 
Next is Brickwork Ratings is an Indian credit rating agency. So again, this is a correct statement, but a very factual statement. So even though ye those factual statement tumko nahi pata hai, still you are able to reach to the answer. Okay, aur pata hai to fir, koi baat hi nahi hai. All right, let's uh, take another question from 2021. Okay, take a moment, pause the video, write down the answers. And, uh, let's see, consider the following. Foreign currency convertible bond foreign institutional investment with certain conditions, global depository receipts, non-resident external deposits, which are the following included in foreign direct investment. So foreign direct investment, kaun kaun sa hai? okay. So foreign direct investment is long term investments, right? Long term investments with an, uh, with a goal of gaining uh, control over the companies in India. So foreign currency convertible bond. Okay, foreign con currency convertible bond through investment are so yeah this can be an example of FDI. Okay. Makes sense. Because if foreign currency convertible bond hai, which means that Indian mm, company has issued this bond in foreign currencies um in uh, some uh, foreign market and waha pe kisi ne ye kharida to that uh, investor will gain control over the indian company or convertible bond hai matlab can be converted into equity of the company so it is an example of foreign direct investment second is foreign institutional investment with certain conditions so foreign institutional investment is obviously long term uh, investment in india so that is also an example of FDI. So second is also correct. Global depository receipts. Now you should know what is global depository receipts. So global depository receipt is when an Indian company have listed its uh, stocks or shares in a foreign uh, exchange rate like London exchange rate or Singapore or New York exchange rate, right? But they directly not directly, they go through an intermediary so that um, so the, there is an Indian company. Suppose there is an Indian company. Okay. This will go to a foreign bank. Let's say US bank. And US bank will list GDRs, Global Deposit Receipts, on behalf of the Indian company in, suppose, New York Stock Exchange. Okay. So any investors buy this G, buy, will buy this GDR, will have directly control over shares of Indian company. So this is also an example of foreign direct investment. So C is also correct. Number three is also correct. Okay. So if these three are correct, then the answer will be your uh, A. Also, if one and two correct, then automatically A is left. We have the other three eliminated. Right? The fourth is non-resident external deposits. So these non-resident Indians will have deposited some money in bank accounts. Those so foreign direct investment may consider that. All right. So the answer is A. Uh, let's see a next question. Another question from 2021. Okay. So write down the answers in the comments. Let's see. Consider the following statement. The effect of devaluation of a currency is that it necessarily so. Again, currency is devalued. So currency ka price come okay. It improves the competitiveness of the domestic exports in foreign market. Now, this is a correct statement. Because as soon as the currency is devalued, so jo foreign investors or foreign buyers, hai, they will have they will have to shell out or pay a lesser amount to buy these Indian domestic products. So competitiveness is So this statement is correct. Uh, one is correct. So two options are eliminated. Second is increase the foreign value of the domestic currency. Now, uh, this does not make sense because just in currency devalue, hoga, its value will decrease. Hai na? So incorrect. And third is, a uh, third is obviously incorrect because option may not Improves the trade balance. But uh, if you have seen some, uh, see, uh, studied the concept of J-curve, right? it says that 
whenever the currency is devalued so initially trade deficit of okay? and so after that the trade uh, goods and services become competitiveness exports rises and uske baad trade surplus hota hai okay so it is not uh, for sure depending on the timeline ki trade balance improve hi hoga in the initial phase trade deficit increase hota hai so this statement is incorrect answer should be a one only right Okay, next, uh, let's tackle this question from prelims 2020. Okay, so uh, try to answer it on your own. And then let's see, with reference to the international trade of India at present, which of the following statement is correct? So talking about the international trade. India's merchandise export are less than its merchandise imports. Okay. So, jitna export kar rahe hain, wo kam hai, aur jitna import kar rahe hain, wo zyada So, which is essentially uh, true for India's uh, trade in goods. Okay. India's import of iron and steel, chemical, fertilizers, machinery have decreased in recent year. So, this uh, is not sure, nahi hai, but uh, decreased in recent year. So, generally, hona nahi chahiye because the economy is growing. So, in absolute terms, uh, import should also grow. Let's see. One is correct. So, it's between A and D. B or C. Eliminate. Ho gaya. Okay. Third is, India's export of services are more than its import of services. So, India is very strong in services. So, this is true. Export of services is uh, more. We uh, export a lot of IT services, a lot of consultancy services. So, Three is correct. So, answer should be D. One, three, and four. Uh, fourth, we take the India suffers from an overall trade or current account deficit, which is also true. We suffer from a current account deficit. So, answer is one, three, and four, which means two is incorrect, which also makes sense because with time, as the economy grows, import in absolute terms should also grow. So, decrease of iron and steel, chemical, fertilizer, machinery does not make sense. Okay. So answer is one, three, and four. Okay, let's take uh, another question from prelims 2020. Okay, write down the answer in the comments below. Okay, let's see. If another global financial crisis happens in near future. <laughs> so accurate. So 2020, mein, this question is, if another global financial crisis happens in near, near future, which of the following action policies are most likely to give immunity, some immunity to India. So, India ke economy ko effect nahi hona, right? One is not depending on short-term foreign borrowings. So, agar short-term foreign borrowings may dependent nahi hai, so agar global financial crisis hota hai, to India shielded rahega. So, this seems to be correct. Opening up to more foreign bank, banks. Opening up to more foreign banks. Agar foreign banks zada uh, invested in the Indian market. Mein. So, global financial crisis will India ko bhi affect India. So, this will not give any immunity to India. So this is no. And maintaining full capital account convertibility. convertibility. Full capital account convertibility means that the capital account mein jo transactions ho hai, like foreign direct investment, foreign portfolio investment, external commercial borrowing, uh, loans, these are the transactions. Ho that can happen very easily. India will not be able to, the government or the RBI will not be able to impose any restrictions. So again, if this happens, there will be no immunity to India, right? So this will also not give any immunity. So the correct answer will be one only, that is A. Okay. All right, next question from 2019. Um, pause the video, try to answer in the comments. Okay, let's see which one of the following is not the most likely measure the government RBI takes to stop the slide of Indian rupee. So the Indian rupee is sliding, rupee sliding, which measures the government or the RBI is not likely to take. Okay, curbing imports of non-essential goods and promoting exports. Um, I think we have already covered this uh, question in monetary policy. Uh, let's see once again. Agar, um, 
थोड़ा रिविजन हो जाएगा इसका भी सो करबिंग इम्पोर्ट्स सो द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया विल ट्राई टू इम्पोर्ट लेस एंड एक्सपोर्ट मोर तो अगर ऐसा करेगा तो इंडियन गवर्नमेंट विल अर्न सब फॉरन करेंसीज राइट रूपी का डिमांड विल ऑल्सो ग्रो सो दिस इज अ स्टेप दैट इंडियन गवर्नमेंट विल टेक आई मीन नॉट टेक दे ढूंढना है ना तो दिस विल इंडियन गवर्नमेंट विल टेक दिस स्टेप सेकेंड इज इंडिया एनकरेजिंग इंडियन बॉर्वर्स टू इशू रूपी डिनोमिनेटेड मसाला बॉन्ड्स सो मसाला बॉन्ड्स इज बॉन्ड्स इशूड बाई इंडियन कंपनीज इन फॉरन एक्सचेंजेस विच आर डिनोमिनेटेड इन रूपी अगर रूपी में डिनोमिनेटेड है तो वट एवर द फ्लक्चुएशन इन द इंटरेस्ट रेट उससे कम इफेक्ट पड़ेगा इंडियन कंपनीज को दिस इज तो दिस इज ऑल्सो समथिंग दैट इंडियन गवर्नमेंट विल डू सी इज ईजिंग कंडीशन रिलेटिंग टू एक्सटर्नल कमर्शियल बोरोइंग ओके सो the government will of india will allow companies to take up loans from foreign uh, companies hai na so foreign companies se loan le rahe hain to obviously this will increase the demand for rupee so again this is something that the rbi government will do and the next is following an expansionary monetary policy expansionary monetary policy will means that uh, the monetary supply has been increased which means the supply of uh, rupees has been increased okay so isse kya hoga ki zyada se zyada rupees available ho ga so this may lead to decline in uh, um the exchange rate so this is something that the indian government will not do but you will not likely we have to find out that the correct answer should be d okay next question is another question from 2019 let's see consider the following statements number 1 purchasing power parity exchange rate purchasing power parity exchange rate kya hota hai which is exchange rate calculated by comparing a basket of goods and services same basket of goods and services in two different countries aur usme dekhte hain ki uska india mein kitna cost hai dusre country mein kitna cost hai usko compare karke ppp exchange rate calculate karte hain right so it calculated by comparing the price of same basket of goods and services in different countries so this is the correct statement and second in terms of ppp dollars india is sixth largest economy in the world so uh, this is not correct in fact india is the third largest economy in the world uh, one is china second is usa and third is india okay in terms of ppp so if you know this uh, uh, fact then you will know that the second statement is incorrect okay so the which of the following statement is correct is one only a all right next question is another question asked in 2019 so a lot of <laughs> these external sector is a favorite for upsc and there are a lot of questions from this topic in context of india which of the following factor is our contributors to reducing the risk of currency crisis so currency crisis ko kam kaise kiya jaye hai na तो अगर करेंसी क्राइसिस को कम करना है तो यू विल हैव टू इंक्रीज द फॉरेन एक्सचेंज रिजर्व फॉरेक्स को बूस्ट अप करना है नंबर वन द फॉरेन करेंसी अर्निंग ऑफ इंडिया आईटी सेक्टर तो आईटी सेक्टर से फॉरेन करेंसी अर्न करेंगे तो उसे फॉरेक्स बूस्ट हो सकता है सो दिस इज यस रिड्यूसिंग द रिस्क ऑफ करेंसी क्राइसिस सेकेंड इज इंक्रीजिंग गवर्नमेंट एक्सपेंडिचर अब गवर्नमेंट एक्सपेंडिचर इंक्रीज कर देंगे तो the uh, the rupee the money supply will be increased money supply and will be increased to rupee depreciate karega so this will not lead to reducing the currency crisis this is incorrect and third is remittances from indians abroad so indians in usa europe other countries are sending money back to india so again is hamara forex boost up hoga so one and three is correct so the correct answer is b one and three Okay, all right. Let's consider the, consider the next question. The info prelims 2019. Ah, uh, most of India's external debt is owed by governmental agency entities. Okay. Now, India का जितना भी external debt है, अगर government ah uh, central government send ah का debt देखे, तो 95 percent of the central government debt is internal, and 5 percent around 5 percent is external. ओके, बट ओवरऑल इंडिया का अगर एक्सटर्नल डेट देखें तो इंडिया का जो एक्सटर्नल डेट है उसमें 
गवर्नमेंट इज वन पार्ट प्राइवेट सेक्टर ने जो एक्सटर्नल कमर्शियल बोरोइंग मसाला बॉन्ड जी डी आर ए डी आर उनसे जो डेट ले रखा है दैट इज प्राइवेट सेक्टर डेट ओके देन देर आर अदर फॉर्म्स ऑफ डेट विच आर डिपॉजिट ऑफ एन आर आईज तो अगर उसमें देखें तो गवर्नमेंट का जो पार्ट है दैट इज वेरी स्मॉल इनफैक्ट जो प्राइवेट सेक्टर ने एक्सटर्नल डेट लिया है दैट फॉर्म्स द मेजर चंग तो इसमें अगर स्टेटमेंट वन देखें मोस्ट ऑफ द इंडियन एक्सटर्नल डेट इज ओन बाई ओड बाई गवर्नमेंटल एंटिटीज then this is incorrect second is all of india's external debt is denominated in us dollar uh, this is a very extreme statement ki sare hi uh, us dollar mein denominated honge to ye to incorrect hone hi hai because obviously some part will be denominated in rupees some part will be denominated in other currencies like euro japanese yen chinese yuan hai na so which of the following statement is correct first is incorrect second is incorrect so it is neither one or two okay so that's it guys we discussed uh, the prelims uh, previous year questions from past 5 years from important chapters of indian economy and uh, i hope by the end of it you are much more comfortable in tackling these questions um thank you very much for reaching the end of this video and all the best for your prelims thank you